Welcome. Welcome to this live presentation on ship formation in machining. Uh, my name is Patrick de Vos, uh, and together with my colleagues, Fiju from India and uh, Alesia from Italy, and those two are the ones doing the magic on the screen here. Uh, we are going to, to talk today about uh, ship formation. My personal passion is machining, is, is understanding machining. And let's start with, with the next step, machinability model. So, so we, we, we see where we, we stand with this. In the next step, machinability model, we start from uh, a machining process. We define the machining process, as you can see now on the screen, uh, as a process where we have a cutting tool, which we push through uh, workpiece material. And we do this to such an extent that we deform the workpiece material. And we, we deform it so much, it shares off under the form of ships. And ships is, is the subject of this. And understanding this, we, we developed a next step machinability model. And that next step machinability model is, is a model where we describe all the different variables we use uh, or we have in a machining process. And all those different variables we describe it as such in, in, in a way on, on how do they interact with each other? How do they influence each other? How do they together define the outcome of, of a machining process? Not only from a technical perspective, but also from, from an economical perspective. Because let's not forget, we, we all like to talk about machining as, as, as a technical thing, but machining is also a process where we chase some, some uh, economical objectives. Now, next in, in this model for today, we are going to concentrate on ships. Ships are formed during a machining process. And the, the, these ships, uh, they, they, they tell us a lot. And, and by looking closely at ships and, and how they are formed, there's lots of things we 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 can learn from. Let's let's next first have have a a look at uh, the basics. And if we look to ships, next question we could ask is: uh, Does there exist something like a good ship, or a bad ship, or a preferred ship? And and if we look around in in a workshop. I'm pretty sure quite a lot of you will recognize situations as what you see on the screen right now. Situations where ships, or from a technical perspective, or from an operational perspective, or from a human perspective, are not exactly what you would like to see. Uh, and, and, and that's the subject of today. What, what can we do to, to avoid that this happens? And, and next, uh, after saying, OK, we, we cannot accept these types of ships, very logical is, is to, to come to, yeah, OK, what is a good ship then? We recognize the bad ones. Uh, but we have to define what is good then. Now, a good ship can be defined in all kinds of different ways. You can, you can define it from a machining uh, scientific perspective and start talking about how certain shapes of ships influence to life and, and the quality of the machine surface. And that's one way to approach uh, a definition for a good ship. Another way to approach a definition for a good ship is, uh, is a ship going to, from an operational perspective, be an element that would lead to a situation where we have to stop the machine. Because the ship, the shapes, the dimensions create an, an issue. And, and stopping the machine from an operational perspective, uh, that's the last you want to do. Because uh, you have to keep your spindles running. Because when the spindles are running, money is earned, work pieces are finished. And, and, and that's what we want. So a good ship also from an operational perspective, there are some considerations we have to think on. And, and there is the human effect. Eh? Because a ship can have such a form or, or dimension that it, 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 it's, 
it's it's not safe for the operator the, who, who manipulates the machine and and that's the third dimension we have to to take into consideration now next if if we look to 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 ship formation there there, there is a model uh, what, what you see here to the left there is a scientific model that describes how ships are formed and if we look into that model we learn that there are quite a lot of, of elements, variables influencing this process. Uh, there is the material that you machine, the workpiece material has an impact on how this, this thing works. The tool you use plays a role. Dif different tools will lead to different uh, ways ships are formed and evacuated. The cutting conditions you use will play a role. There's quite a lot of variables in, in the description of this model. And next, that's 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 what we, we want to do. It's talking about this and, and trying from the beginning uh, create an, an objective. If, if we look to ships and how they are formed, we, we, we can have the objective that we say, okay, ships should be as such that they are not too long because mainly from an operational perspective from a, from a human perspective long ships is something we do not like to see long ships stop the machine and and then the, the spindles stop running long ships are a burden for the operators so long ships we we do not really like short ships we also don't like and that's more from a machining scientific perspective because short ships are going to put uh yeah too too much loads on a cutting edge is is long ships are going to overload the load bearing capacity of cutting edges and, and that will lead to all kinds of technical unwanted situations short tool life unpredictable tool wear bad quality and and so on and so forth we need to find ships which are neither too short neither too long something in between so the outcome of our equation must be that that we 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 have what is defined as short spiral ships that's that's the the dream scenario that that's what we should aim for next in this equation is that we we try to specify the main families of variables and we did each family what are the sub elements and and as i already note uh, said the cutting tool plays a role the cutting conditions plays a role the workpiece material is 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 an important element and cooling i didn't i did not mention cooling already but cooling also is a very important variable here now in within the short time we have today of course we can't treat every single individual variable or factor in this equation so so i'm going to stick to the the main ones let's say the ones which are marked here in red and next, I'm, I want to walk through the different families and, 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 and muse a little bit on it. Workpiece materials. The workpiece material we machine, and you see it here both illustrated with, 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 with pictures and in videos, the workpiece materials, and I use as a reference here the, the ISO family thinking, the workpiece materials with the properties they have mainly the mechanical properties play a, the, the major role here different workpiece materials leads although the basic process is still the same push a tool through workpiece material push it so hard it deforms and it shares up under the form of a ship that basic phenomena we always see happening but to which type of ship it leads there we see major differences now um, if if I, if I if i need to to prioritize one property i would say concentrate on the ductility of the workpiece material the lower the ductility of a workpiece material the shorter the ships will be the lo the, the, the the higher the ductility of the workpiece material the higher or the longer the ships will be that that's that's a bit of the the key thing so workpiece materials the next thing after workpiece materials is is cooling systems now cooling systems in machining 
is, is, is a bit of, 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 of a chapter. What do I say? A, a book on its own. Because cooling systems uh, uh, in, in machining, we use them for a multitude of reasons. Uh, it, it, it's about uh, temperature control. It, it's about lubrification. It's about cleaning. It's about workpiece quality. It's about the performance of a cutting tool. There are so many things we, we, we can talk about when we talk about cooling. But, but the thing here uh, we, we talk about is ship formation. So the question is, uh, cooling, does it play a role in ship formation? And the answer is very clearly yes, but not always. Kind of, if, if we limit the question to cooling systems in a sense of uh, the composition, how much cutting oil in, in the emulsion, or, or which type of emulsion, uh, or, or, or should I do dry machining, the, those classic type of cooling systems, there we, we can say from a practical perspective, Cooling does not really influence ship formation, but there is one exception, and the one exception is what is referred to as high pressurized directed cooling, which is a mouthful. Uh, mostly, this, this approach, this, this system is known under commercial names. In, in Circle, we talk about jet stream cooling. Um, jet stream being high pressurized directed cooling systems there we see that it it very clearly influences uh, ship formation so that's why i said that the, the question here when we when we discuss on cooling systems and the impact they have on ship formation it's on the one hand staying to the more classic cooling systems i have to say not really on the other hand i have to make the exception for high pressurized directed cooling systems like, like jet stream as, as we call it in second there the impact is clear next after cooling and another major thing uh, and, and before I forget, as this is a live session, if you have questions, because I know I, I, I move fast, eh? we, we, we have limited time. If there are questions, put, put your questions in. Eh? In the end, we have a question and answer session. And we try to, to handle as many pos as possible the questions you have. Uh, cutting tools. Does, does the selection of a cutting tool influence how ships are formed? Yes, of course. And the main feature here, because yeah, if we talk about cutting tools, there are so many elements there, cutting materials and, and, and coatings and stuff like that. But, but the thing we really should talk about when we talk about ship formation is the so-called ship breaking geometry of a tool. As the word says, it, it's a geometry which is given to the cutting edge. And the purpose of the geometry is to influence how ships break how ships are formed and, and how we manage to break the ships. So indeed, the, the choice of a cutting tool is, 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 is a major thing when we discuss ship formation. And the major feature is ship breaking geometries. Now, next, if we talk about ship breaking geometries, um, we, 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 we have to, to to involve cutting conditions. You can't talk about one without mentioning the other. Because a ship breaking geometry is designed in a certain material when used with certain cutting conditions, so that it in, 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 in that situation it will give good ships, not too long, not too short, controllable. Uh, what, what we want, as, as we defined before. Uh, and this is not a theory. This is reality. Reality, this is practice. I mean with this, uh, people in research who, who design shipbreaking geometries, they, they design those things not based on theoretical considerations, but on practical considerations. They design the geometry, they go to the machine, they combine certain combinations of cutting conditions with a certain material and so on, and they look at the ships. And that is what you see on the, on the screen here. It's a practical, what is referred to as a ship breaking chart. It is measured in reality for a certain 
tool with a ship breaking geometry in a certain workpiece material in certain conditions of cooling and so on it's it's it is uh, yeah for the different combinations of cutting conditions the type of ships which will be formed and then it's a human decision which ships do we accept which type of ships do we decline which type of ships are preferred which types of ships should be avoided and the two main cutting conditions in in this thing uh, are the feet and the depth of cut feet and depth of cut when we look at cutting conditions uh, are the main things uh, theoretical if we try to understand that reality it leads us to considerations and perhaps out of, the, of this presentation the picture you see now is perhaps the most important one because here what you see is scientific considerations around ship breaking confronted with the reality as i said you go to a machine you make ships you see what you have and then what you what you what you will see is that there are certain windows certain domains you see here a visualization. I use this mainly for educational purposes, for information purposes, to let people understand some principles. But you see basically five windows here. Up left, the big depths of cuts combined with rather low feeds, that's the domain of the long ships, the ribbon ships, things we like to avoid. Because these things will stop your machines. These, tip, these ships will, will endanger your, your, your operators. You don't want that. So, so that first window is something you, you prefer not to be into. The second window, upright, is the window, I sometimes call it a little bit, <laughs> the, the window of the broken tools. If you combine feeds and depths of cut, which are too high the combination of the two you are going from a mechanical perspective you are going to overload the cutting edges and if you overload cutting edges you break them it, it's simple which brings me to the third window which is down right the window of the very short ships it's high feeds big feeds combined with rather low depths of cut there you find the domain, it, it's neighbor to broken tools, the domain of the very short ships. And the very short ships that are the ones who are going to lead to certain types of wear, which are going to shorten your tool life of the cutting edges quite a lot. So from a, an economical perspective, if you look to tool costs, it's perhaps a window you prefer not to be. The fourth window. Uh, is down left, the window of the square ships. Now, square ships is the type of ships you are going to have if you combine a small depth of cut with a low feed, and, and then you end up where, where the square ships are formed. And a square ship is, is uh, how to say, it? it's a rebel ship. It doesn't obey any rules anymore. It does its own thing. And it leads to completely unpredictable wear patterns, completely uncontrollable tool, tool wear, tool life. It's endangering uh, yeah, your operators quite a lot because these types of ships, they, they, they show a tendency to, to, to go all over. And, and uh, yeah, that's not a nice situation to be in. The fifth window, the one in the middle, as always, it's the one in the middle where, where, where things are nice. The blue area here is a domain where ship formation is in line with expectations. The short spiral ships being a combination of things leading to, from a scientific perspective, a technical perspective, a controllable machining process that delivers upon the economical expectations we have from it. Meaning produce workpieces with, 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 with the correct quality within the estimated time at the estimated cost factors and so on and so forth. Now, this diagram also shows very, very simple in a practical way, if you want to have ship control, what to do? 
you do your machining, you watch the ships, and depending on what you see, uh, you, you have to modify things. I imagine you stay with the tool you have been selecting, and you observe that your ships are too long to your likings. You, you, want, you would like to see them shorter, but increase your feeds. Increase the feed so much that the ships start to have the shape you prefer. Don't overdo it, because otherwise you end up in the broken inserting. If your ships are too short, yeah, reduce the feed uh, until you end up in the domain where, where, where the ships form is, is, is what you like. Don't overdo it, or you will end up in the domain of, of the square ships, which again, you, 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 you would not like. So feed seems to be the major cutting condition in, in this respect. Now, if you don't manage with feed to solve your problem, then the, the second thing to do is to reconsider your tool selection. It means you have been selecting a tool with a ship breaking geometry, a capacity to form ships in a correct way, which is not in line with your expectations you had from the beginning for cutting conditions you want to use. The next cutting condition, uh, I just want to mention it, because again, this is something it, it's 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 so yeah so so I should not say difficult, but there are so many things here to consider. That's that's the, the cutting speed. Now cutting and and the impact of a cutting speed. Uh, if you want to see what the cutting speed do does to 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 the type of ship which is formed, have a look at the twist drill. When a twist drill is 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 cutting, the two cutting edges in the front. Every point on the cutting edge, on the two cutting edges, is cutting with a different cutting speed. And look to the ship how it is formed. You see a, in, in, in drilling with twist drills, you see a rather complex ship formation process because we combine different cutting, uh, cutting speeds are all at the same time. One of the reasons it's so difficult to break ships here is, is that play with cutting speeds. I just wanted to mention it, it here. Uh, but in the end, the next thing is uh, bring everything together. Everything together means that you have, you, you select tools. The feature of the tools we talk about here is the, the ship breaking geometry. There are different ship breaking geometries and every ship breaking geometry has another domain window of possible applications, see feeds and depths of cut, which I try to visualize here with uh, the diagram to the left, a ship breaking diagram, a, a bit of a theoretical ship breaking diagram. And I take here three examples of three different geometries. And as we see, the different geometries gives us possibilities for different combinations of cutting conditions to be used, feeds and depths of cut, and still have good ship formation. If you prefer to work with small depths and cuts and feeds, think of finishing, well, the, the geometry down to the left there is most probably your best choice. If you are thinking of more roughing type operations, big depths of cuts and feeds, and you want to have good ships and no broken tools, the geometry you see to the upper right is perhaps the best choice uh, for you. This type of things in technical guides, next, you, you see them represented like this, this type of diagrams, which is kind of a, uh, yeah, a, a thinking thing. It shows, this is just an example, you'll find lots of examples like this uh, all around. It, it is an overview of different tools, more in particular ship breaking geometries for a certain application. In this example, it's turning. In different materials, you recognize, I trust the, the, the ISO colors. And each geometry, what is given here, is kind of the theoretical best combination of a feed and a depth of cut for this geometry to function to the best of its possibilities. Of course, you can deviate from that. You can lower, you can increase. Then, then we go back to the previous visualization, which is the full ship breaking range of a certain insert. But, but here, everything comes together. The next thing is, yeah, OK, I, I, I know this now. Uh, 
how, how do I apply it in, in the workshop? But for that, there are all kinds of things available, of course. Uh, I, I, I make reference here to uh, uh, machining posters as, as we have them, and, and, and I concentrate here on, on, on the part where we give advice, practical tips and tricks on shipbreaking. Uh, the meaning is having short spirally formed ships. If you observe different types of ships, what you find on this poster is, is advice. And you'll find the advice mainly on how to modify the feet, as that is the major thing here. And if that doesn't satisfy you, how to modify the geometry. So it, it's, it's core. It, it's it's, it's, it's the, the first things to do when you struggle with this. Now, this type of posters, uh, yeah, you, you can find on the website uh, if, if you are interested in this. Um, and and yeah, as, as I see nearly again, we are, uh, yeah, the, the 30 minutes is gone. Uh, a lot more information on, on ship formation, the, the science behind it, the technology and, and things. You, you can find, of course, on the website, you, you can find it in all the technical uh, publications we, we have on machining and machining processes. Uh, ship breaking, it's a key thing. Ships should not be too short because that's going to basically uh, be a, a serious ups, obstacle for, for high performance of your cutting tools, too short ships. Ships should not be too long either because that from an operational perspective is going to stop the spindle is going to stop the machine and as as we know spindles must be running then they, they are earning money for the company if the machine stops it, it it's not good so ships must must be in balance between those two things that 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 is this is the thing the workpiece material plays a role, is, is a factor in the equation. Uh, the selected tool, noticeable the, the, the ship breaking geometry. Cooling, when we talk about high, high pressurized directed cooling systems, uh, influences it. Cutting conditions um, and, and cutting conditions. It's mainly feed and depth of cut. That, that's the two major ones. The, the number one is feet. Uh, which brings me next to question and answer. And if I see the amount of questions that came in so far, uh, I wonder if we can give answers to all of them. But uh, let's try where we end up. Uh, and uh, yeah. As I said, the others, you, you can find much more information in other places. Uh, I, I will use social media channels to, to, to take care of those questions anyway afterwards. Question number one, how will I create short ships when drilling with a carbide insert drill? Uh, like in turning, like in turning. It, it, it's about uh, insert selection. Uh, ship breaking geometry selection and it's about playing with the feet make feet in line with ship breaking capacity of the geometry you selected uh, be careful with the center insert because there you have the, the 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 influence of modifying cutting speeds the center ship could be a, a, a bit of a bigger issue uh, uh, that that's that's yeah in a nutshell how I would would give an answer to this. The next question: How will cutting temperature will affect ship formation? Uh, that's I would say from a practical perspective, if if we stay within uh, normal working conditions, as we see it daily in a workshop. Uh, I would say the cutting temperature is, is of a minor importance. Of course, the general picture, and I, now I talk from uh, materials with a high ductility, the higher the cutting temperature, the more high cutting temperatures combined with high ductility will soften the material. And softer materials, it's, easy, it's more difficult to break them in short pieces. 
But I would say that's more an academical answer now. The more practical answer is if we stay within normal working conditions, cutting temperature for, for traditional workpiece materials. Uh, I have to, to be careful now that we don't start discussing plastics because that's quite a different story than again, but in normal uh, metals, materials, steel and so on, don't worry about the cutting temperature for ship formation. That, that's the subject of today. The next question, uh, how will you manage the ship formation in small pieces with materials like uh, stainless steels? Uh, you want my honest answer? That would be, I would try to combine a geometry uh, and a feed in such a way that the ships show rather a tendency to, to become longer, not ribbon shaped. That, that, that's, the, that's the limit. But if you can have them spirally shaped, try to, to work towards a longer form of a spiral, not, not, not endlessly long spirals, because yeah, then you have evacuation problems. And why do I say this? Because if you try to go for short ships in this combination, stainless steels, short ships, as far as I understand, small work pieces, low stability, risk for vibration, stuff like that, stay away from short ships. Stay away from short ships in, in this situation. Uh, what is my point of view about uh, CO2 supercritical in uh, type of cooling? Uh, I, I said before one of the previous questions, uh, cutting temperatures do not play a major role uh, in, in how ships are formed. Now, the moment you start using CO2 supercritical, that's the moment you go out of what I defined before uh, as normal application. Now, forgive me to use the word normal. I do not claim that CO2 supercritical is abnormal. That's, I mean, normal in, 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 in the sense of daily, uh, daily situations. Uh, my experience, I haven't seen it a lot. I, I only saw it in laboratory conditions, if I'm honest. Uh, supercritical CO2 shows a clear tendency to make ships shorter. Uh, it has to do with stresses which are created in the ships and, and those stresses leads to cracks and those cracks kind of fragment ships in a shorter form as, as, as what we would have normally. Uh, next question, ah, also about cooling. Does cutting coolant ratio affects the ship form? I suppose you refer to the, the composition, how much cutting oil into the emulsion. Uh, that's my interpretation. Uh, quickly put in comment if, if I, I have a wrong interpretation here, but uh, I have to give you an indirect answer. The, 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 the emulsion ratio, influences the tendency for build-up edge wear to be, be, to be formed. So if you increase cutting oil percentage in the emulsion, there will be a lower tendency for build-up edge formation, especially stainless steels and titanium alloys and things like that. We, we, we should be careful here with. And a second thing is that the build-up edge, when it's formed, is going to influence how ships are formed in a negative way. So my answer is an indirect answer. If you use higher emulsion ratios, as that reduces the tendency for build-up edge, yes, indeed, through that build-up edge, it will influence ship formation. But it's indirect. It, it's not a direct relation. It goes over the formation or not formation of build-up edges. Uh, I have to keep my eyes on the time. Uh, next question, uh, are ceramic cutters becoming more prevalent within the industry? Uh, 
good question, but but, but uh, yeah, the subject is ship formation. But but anyway, uh, I know I, I saw the first ceramic cutters or, or ceramic as a cutting material appearing 25 years ago. And and uh, 25 years ago, it was said this is the cutting material of the future. This will will push carbide away. Now we are 25 years later. And my honest opinion, personal opinion, and I hope I don't shock anybody. For me, ceramics are, are still the cutting materials of the future. We see them more. But, but the big thing is what was predicted 20 years ago, to be honest, not in the workshops where, where I am when, when I'm out uh, in, in the machining industry. Uh, I hope I, I didn't shock anybody with, with this answer. Uh, next question. Uh, ah, that question we already had. Uh, the next knowledge on API balancing procedures. Uh, yeah, that's that's again a question which is which is not directly related to to ship formation and and seeing the limited time. Yeah, I, I would like to park that question for for yeah perhaps a future live event on on on, on subjects of of tool quality. Uh, the next question: coatings for roughing, PVD, CVD, or CERMED, and which coating for finishing without cooling? Uh, it seems there are quite some some machinists in 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 the audience today. I like this, but but I have to stick to the time though. It, uh, I would say basic choice now, a basic choice. No time to, to handle all, all, all the details and exceptions to the general rule because you know machining, you have one general rule and then you have a million exceptions. Uh, for me, coating for roughing, uh, personally, I believe a lot in CVD for, for a number of reasons. PVD for me is more for finishing. Basically, it has to do with production technology. What can we, how can we put certain types of coatings around cutting tools? And, and uh, PVD is a type of coating we can put on sharp cutting edges, and sharp cutting edges is what we prefer for finishing. So kind of PVD is preferred for finishing, where uh, CVD, which yeah, a CVD has a much better attachment of coatings and stuff, but CVD is a technique which, which we cannot use on sharper tools. So, so we are limited to not so sharp tools, roughing tools. Although I hope most of you know in the meantime, we, we have the so-called empty CVD approaches, which, which we use uh, as an example in, in Duratomic, what, what you see here, where yeah, yeah, technology doesn't stop. It, it continues uh, forever. Uh, tapping is the next question. Uh, uh, yeah, the, what about tapping? Uh, yeah, what about tapping? Uh, when, when we refer here to, to ship formation, um, I would say, again, personal opinion, personal experience, in tapping, you should not even bother or, or try to influence how ships are formed, because as 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 the one asking the question is noticing is very precisely, very exactly, the only cutting condition basically you can play with is is the cutting speed. Depth of cut is fixed, feet is fixed, so, so you can't do anything there. Uh, tapping, I would say it's more about ship projection, as it is called. Ship projection is uh, is uh, how to say, if, if you are in a situation, you can't break ships, like in tapping, like in twist drills of small diameters where, where you can't play with the feeds because otherwise you break the, the, the drills or you have vibrations. So situations where the needed higher feeds to have shorter ships are impossible in, in practical reality. It's more about steering the ships, steer them in such a way that, 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 that they are least harmless. For instance, if I take a tap, uh, 
if you do tapping in a blind hole, uh, you don't want the ships to end below the tap. You want the ships to come out. If you do tapping in a true hole, the best thing most probably is to push the ships in front of the tap instead of trying to pull them out. So it and, and when you start taking into consideration that type of things, that's what I refer to with ship projection techniques. Also in, 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 uh, in plastics, we, we use this, especially in thermoplast plastics. We, we use ship projection techniques. Uh, when, when for, for one reason you have to, to turn in, in rubber, for instance, you, you can't break the ships at all. So it's much more about ship projection there. Uh, the next, yeah, we have a couple of minutes left. The, the last question then, uh, what to say about ship formation when profiling with round inserts, when ray can go, ah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really, I, I, I really machining people here. I see lots of questions based on practical experience. Um, ship formation with round inserts. Um, here we, we face, uh, an issue with that the thickness of a ship is variable. It goes from very thin to, no, I should not say very thick, but thicker. And that means in a relative thing, in a relative way, the ratio between in section, the thickness of a ship and the length of a ship is variable. So you work with uh, variable ship slenderness ratios, the width divided by the thickness, and that creates slender ships, long ships. And, and uh, in this case, uh, but perhaps I should park this, this question also a little bit because I, I have uh, a dream I have is to spend one day in, in, in this channel also some time on things like like ship thicknesses and equivalent ship thicknesses and and and, and average ship thicknesses because the, then the, this type of thing is going to be the subject of discussion. To to, to give the, the question anyway an as concrete answer as possible, uh, you you face here an issue. Ships will show a tendency to be rather long, especially when when you are uh, yeah. Also, the rake angle variation because of the depth of cut could could be modified. You the copy copy milling and, and plunge milling and pocket milling and so on. Ships ships will be an issue. Pretty sure. Uh, ship projection, cooling systems. Uh, yeah. The, the combination of diameter of a milling cutter will, will, will be an element you, could, you can play with here. Uh, yeah, the, the, it will be an issue. There are ways around it, but, but seeing, seeing yeah, the clock continue sticking, I, I, I have to, uh, yeah, to, to, to stay with that as an answer. Power skiving. What about power skiving? Uh, and another situation where, where you have issues with ship slenderness things. Power skiving, uh, by definition, while cutting gives a long ship. But as power skiving is interrupted cutting to some extent, most of the time, ships will be broken automatically before they become embarrassing long. I would say. Uh, but if you think on power skiving operations, I would say the basic rule uh, to make ships shorter in a sense of make the, the, the geometry of the cutting edge more negative or increase the feet will, will, will work here also. Uh, but, but you are on, 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 on a border here. You, you, you are on a limit. Uh, I propose we, we stop here with, with the question section. Uh, I see still questions coming in. I, I try to, to take care of them afterwards in, in comments. Anyway, if, if you want more information on this, as you know, we have the, the, the psychotechnical education programs 
uh, and one of the the courses is is on ship breaking techniques how, how to control your ships we have all the, the the technical publications the technical books we have in which of course ship formation is each time an important chapter on the website you can find uh, quite a lot of information on this subject also look at the poster download the poster it's it's easy to use and, and it gives direct answers to direct questions uh, next the only thing which which uh, i'm left with is to say thank you thank you for the interest thank you for the questions very good questions very practical questions and uh, the next session we talk today a little bit about tool selection select uh, ship breaking geometries and stuff uh, th that thing we, we we want to take on next time uh, a little bit broader how do we select tools in, in, a, in a very general way. How do we select tools in such a way that we could call the machining process being sustainable? Technically good, scientific, acceptable, economical, justifiable, and so on and so forth. Thank you, and I hope I, I, I could give you an, an interesting half an hour talking on, on machining issues. Thank you. Looking forward to meet you next time.